CJ, please don't kill Ryder. Think about whether you want this, and if it's the right thing to do. These are just a few examples of thoughts that may appear in our heads when we're very familiar with the storyline of a given part of GTA, and we know exactly what we should do in the particular situation. There are quite a lot of moments in the GTA series that are similar to the example from the beginning. In each part of this franchise, there are situations in which we would give a lot to be able to make our own decisions, and not just be the doer of what the protagonist wants to do. A great example is the murder of Kenji Kassen by Claude in GTA 3. In 2001, the main character started working for a politician and real estate magnate, Donald Love. Love's tasks were extremely well paid, and Claude wanted to work for this gentleman as long as possible. However, one time, Claude was given an assignment that wasn't worth any money, to be honest. After Claude saved the Oriental gentleman from the Colombian cartel, Love immediately asked his associate for another, this time quite a controversial favor. Claude's task was to murder Kenji, the Wakagashida of the Yakuza, the gang for which Claude had worked for some time. The mission was to be done undercover, to spark a very tense gang war between the Yakuza and the Colombians. For this reason, Claude had to steal a cartel cruiser so that the Yakuza would be convinced that the Colombians were behind the assassination of Kenji. The problem is that Kenji didn't deserve to die. Yes, he sometimes had a bad temper, which Claude found out while performing a task called Smackdown. But apart from that, the Yakuza lived in good relations with Claude, and you could even say that they supported him. Claude could always count on solid, quick payment and various types of help, such as when Claude was betrayed by the Leone crime family. Not only did Claude betray the Yakuza, who treated him well, but he also exposed himself to potentially serious trouble. And what if Asuka, Kenji's sister, suddenly found out the truth? What if it suddenly turned out that Claude killed Kenji? Claude would then be in huge trouble. At every step, he could encounter one of his many enemies. Claude has already been wanted by the Leones, the Triads, the Colombian Cartel, and also the Uptown Yardies, which at some stage were allied with the Colombians and exposed Claude to Catalina, which we also witnessed during the Kingdom Come mission. So, as you can see, it was a terrible decision made by Claude. However, it's a good thing that because the Yakuza didn't find out that Claude was behind Kenji's murder, there were no major consequences. Tommy Versetti made an equally bad mistake, almost at the beginning of his stay in Vice City. There are exactly two moments. The first one is when Tommy kills Leo Teal, and the second one is when he gets rid of Gonzalez. As a quick reminder, Tommy Versetti was tasked with recovering stolen drugs and money from a busted deal at the docks to settle his debt to Sonny. Tommy was supposed to prove his loyalty to the Ferrellis. Therefore, in the weeks following the failed exchange, he began a large investigation for the culprits. Some people, like Ken Paul and Colonel Cortez, gave Tommy the first clues in this case. Paul mentioned a particular chef who recently seemed to be spending more money than he earned, Leo Teal while Cortez pointed to his right-hand man, Gonzalez, who was also an important element in the whole puzzle. At this point, Tommy had everything to solve the whole mystery. Tommy had to do exactly what the Vance brothers did to Brian Forbes in 1984. If anyone didn't know this story, in other words, all he had to do was kidnap Teal and Gonzalez and force them to talk. It would be very easy, especially in the case of Gonzalez, because he was not a tough player and used bribing in the past. Instead, Tommy decided to murder both of them without a second thought, leaving the mystery unsolved. Even Lance Vance himself mentions it during the back alley brawl mission, wondering how Tommy could waste such an opportunity to find out the truth. By the way, if you have any reasonable explanation for this situation, please write your ideas in the comments because, in my opinion, it's hard to find any justification for Tommy's behavior here. Going back to Lance, who was praised a second ago, even twice does not change the fact that he did not commit stupid things. Quite the contrary, in some situations, he simply lacked common sense, a great example of which is the From Zero to Hero mission. However, before we get to it, let's start with the basics. Jerry Martinez has been Vic Vance's archenemy almost from the very beginning of GTA Vice City stories. Moreover, Martinez had many connections, and generally speaking, he was a serious player in the city, and no one wanted to step on his toes. 
At one point, Lance Vance heard that Martinez's men were transporting a load of cocaine. Around the same time that Martinez's men were transporting cocaine, the Vance brothers were trying to expand their drug business. I'm sure we're not the only ones quick to connect the dots here. Just as quickly, Lance connected the dots and told everything to his brother, offering to steal the merchandise. When Lance talks about it, the seemingly reasonable Vic later suddenly realizes that it would be a great idea to get the drugs back for Martinez's people. Vic's decision is completely ill-considered. Even if the goods transported by Martinez's men actually belong to him, it would still be a stupid move to irritate the unpredictable Martinez. It's like waving a red rag one meter away from an angry bull. In addition, Vic and Lance forgot at that moment that Martinez was not involved in the mass dealing of cocaine, and therefore, the product did not belong to him, but was only under his control temporarily. The point is obvious almost from the very beginning and is bluntly confirmed shortly after. Vic and Lance learned that Martinez's people were supposed to act as intermediaries and were supposed to deliver drugs for a certain cartel, specifically the one run by the Mendez brothers. Of course, the Vance brothers' businesses almost immediately began to be attacked by the Mendez cartel. Moreover, the Vance brothers' search for a solution only added fuel to the fire. Lance Vance lied to the Mendez brothers, telling them that it was actually Martinez who set them up and that he was an undercover agent working with the DEA. To somehow maintain the credibility of this fairy tale, the Vance brothers had to start working for the Mendez brothers. Of course, it turned out quickly that cheaters never prosper. The Vance brothers' stupidity was exposed, which led to a gang war between the cartels. This, in turn, led to many disastrous consequences, such as the death of a woman close to Vic's heart, Louise Cassidy Williams. CJ also made several bad choices during the GTA San Andreas storyline. For instance, he brutally slaughtered a lot of construction workers on a construction site in Doherty. And yes, it's hard to disagree with the fact that the workers who started calling Kendall names, whistling at her, and generally behaving rudely towards her should be taught a lesson. But what CJ did was a gross overreaction. CJ used bulldozers parked on the construction site to destroy employee boots, generating significant financial losses. Then he killed construction workers and foremen and threw the construction manager locked in a portable toilet straight into a hole, which he then filled with cement. Under normal conditions, such an action would not have gone unnoticed. The police would definitely get CJ. If something like this actually happened, all the media would be talking about it. Well, taking into account that Mike Torino has not been protecting CJ at the stage of the plot in which the massacre took place yet, CJ certainly would not have been able to hide from justice for too long. CJ was also equally stupid when he went with Ken Rosenberg to the slaughterhouse, a slaughterhouse belonging to the Sindacos, where it was almost certain that CJ would meet Johnny Sindaco, whom he transported some time ago on the hood of Feltzer. If anyone doesn't remember, the Sindacos were seriously damaging the triad's interests in Las Venturas. Since Woozy was close friends with CJ, CJ decided to do Woozy a favor when Johnny was captured during one of the Sindacos' sabotage operations. It was then that CJ drove Feltzer through the local streets with Johnny strapped to his hood to force him to talk and get valuable information from him. After this action, it was obvious that Johnny would remember CJ's face for the rest of his life. Despite this, CJ went with Ken to the slaughterhouse, where in the end, he was very lucky. Well, the weekend Johnny had a heart attack. If Johnny had controlled his nerves and hadn't died, it could have ended like a true disaster for CJ. In such a situation, Johnny would say out loud that CJ was working with the triads led by Woozy. And then the whole elaborate plan of robbing the Caligula's casino and getting the Italian mafia out of town could be thrown into the trash. What's more, CJ could destroy the Four Dragons Casino, which is the thriving business of CJ's good friend in which CJ, by the way, had huge shares. So Carl Johnson would have buried not only himself, but also Woozy and his partner, Mr. Ron Fali, who also had shares in this casino. CJ did no better by killing Ryder during the Pier 69 mission. Ryder was just a pawn manipulated by Big Smoke, who did not harm CJ with his own hands. At the beginning of the story, which we also witnessed, Ryder was helping the families. CJ completely failed to notice that Ryder at one point had no choice because Sweet was going into conflict with all the gangs in the city, not realizing that he was destroying his gang from the inside by himself. Sweet managed the gang incompetently and was unable to earn money. The gang had neither appropriate weapons 
nor a leader who could restore order and motivate gang members to fight. Ryder knew that to save his ass, he would have to go with Big Smoke. Despite this, everything indicates that he decided to do so very late, especially considering the number of missions in which he helped Ryder in matters related to families, such as obtaining better weapons. When CJ got through all the enemy gang members in the Pier 69 mission and killed T-Bone Mendez, it was a better idea to talk to the now defenseless Ryder. It's not without reason that even fan-made alternative endings to this mission were created, in which CJ talks to his friend and reaches an agreement. It's a pity that the creators didn't allow us to make our own choice here, because in the eyes of many players, Ryder had not done so much wrong at that point that he could not count on forgiveness. This is a very interesting matter, and I hope to get some insights from you in the comments. Be sure to watch the video displayed on the left side of the screen. In that episode, I discuss why CJ couldn't leave Los Santos at the beginning of the game, and why CJ was not allowed by Tenpenny to return to Los Santos after the Green Saber mission. Take care and see you soon!